Hello, today we're going to start by talking about the Calvin cycle. This is found in section 8.3 of your textbook. And this is the next step in photosynthesis. So um, basically what happens in the Calvin cycle is we are taking the ATP and NADPH found um, that are produced from the light cycle and they are used to reduce carbon dioxide into sugar. So if you recall kind of the main point of photosynthesis was to create an organic compound the plants could use um, in, for energy and the way that they do this um, really happens through the Calvin cycle. Um, and they require these products of the light cycle in order to make the Calvin cycle run. Um, similar to the citric acid or Krebs cycle of cellular respiration, the Calvin cycle regenerates its starting material after the molecules enter and leave the cycle, so it can continue moving um, over and over again without any additional inputs. Um, unlike the citric acid cycle, however, the Calvin cycle is anabolic, so it's building something up as opposed to breaking something down, and that something is sugar. So the Calvin cycle is responsible for building up sugar for the plant to use from smaller molecules, and it does this by using ATP and the reducing power of the electrons carried by NADPH. The light-dependent reactions, just as a reminder, have occurred already in the thylakoid. They required light and water, and um, the result of that, those electrons are energized by the light and they get passed through an electron transport chain producing ATP and NADPH. The water also splits and forms oxygen gas. So the ATP and the NADPH are really where we want to focus today because those move on to the Calvin cycle, which will, um, with the input of carbon dioxide, produce sugar for us. Um, it should be noted the Calvin cycle occurs in the stroma, and it's also known as the light-independent reaction because it doesn't require light to work. Um, some people have used to call the dark cycle or the light independent cycle, the dark cycle, although this is less commonly used now because it led to the misconception that it could take place in the dark. But that's not necessarily true. Um, it doesn't necessarily work well in the dark. It just means that there's no light that's needed for the input of the reaction um, in contrast to the light cycle. Once again, the main point of the Calvin cycle is to um, take the ATP and NADPH from the light cycle and use them to fix carbon dioxide into glucose so the carbon dioxide gets reduced. And um, those sugars that are produced from the Calvin cycle are used to either build other carbon compounds or for energy. So when we talk about the Calvin cycle, we typically talk about three different phases. First is carbon dioxide fixation, then carbon dioxide reduction, and then finally the regeneration of RUVP. In carbon dioxide fixation, the first step, a carbon dioxide molecule, which you'll note has one carbon, combines with a five carbon molecule called RUBP. This reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme known as Rubisco, and Rubisco is incredibly necessary for the Calvin cycle, and plants need a lot of it to keep the cycle consistently running. So for that reason, scientists estimate that Rubisco is probably the most abundant protein found on our planet. Um, however, when these combine, we end up getting a six carbon molecule that's very, very unstable, and almost immediately, it is turned into two three PGA molecules, um, and each of these molecules has three carbons. So we started with six, now we have two molecules, each with three carbons, and the Rubisco has fixed that carbon dioxide and started to make it usable. The second step, carbon dioxide reduction, converts carbon dioxide to a carbohydrate using electrons and energy. And there's a lot that goes on in, goes on in this step. The ATP and NADPH, which you'll recall come from the light cycle, are oxidized in order to reduce 3PGA and make G3P molecules. Um, and these are once again three carbon sugars. Um, and this happens because um, the NADPH from the light cycle donates electrons to this process. Um, and so for every three molecules of carbon dioxide that pass through the cycle, we actually get six G3P produced. So this um, 
this cycle right here is actually showing us what happens when we have three molecules passing through. Um, at the beginning here, I was only talking about one. But um, we want the cycle to proceed several times over so that we can end up getting an, what we need. Um, so after three CO2s have passed through the cycle, we get six G3P. One of these G3P gets used to make glucose, and the rest move on to the last part of the Kelvin cycle, the regeneration of RUBP. As mentioned before, the other five G3P molecules um, are regenerated into RUBP, um, which is allows us to um, restart the cycle. Um, remember, those RUBP are going to combine with the CO2 with the help of Rubisco and form that six carbon molecule. Um, the regeneration of RUBP actually costs us three ATPs, um, and so that's what we end up getting in the end. Just as a little bit of a summary, the Calvin cycle has to run six times over in order for us to complete the process of, cellu of uh, photosynthesis. Um, when we turn through the cycle one time, we only get one carbon out to form glucose. However, we need a total of six carbons, so we need six cycles. Um, from those six cycles, you'll remember the last side, for every three CO2, you get six G3P. So when we have six cycles of the Calvin cycle, we get 12 G3P. Two of those are used to make the glucose, and you can see because we'll have two of these in the end, 2 uh, times 3 is 6, and that's how many carbons glucose has. And the other 10 G3P are regenerated into the cycle, making 6 more RUBP. So this picture is showing the cycle um, for 3 carbon dioxides moving through. But actually, it goes one at a time. And that happens 6 times. Or if you're looking at this picture, this photo would have to happen twice in order for us to get the final result. So um, the result, uh, resulting reactants that we need for the cycle um, for all six are six carbon dioxides, which should look familiar from the general equation, 18 ATP, and 12 NADPH. Um, this should say NADPH at the bottom there. Um, this diagram, once again, is only showing three carbon dioxide molecules at a time. But what really happens is one CO2 goes through at a time, and um, it has to happen six times. So this diagram is a little bit of a misnomer, but I think the pictures are good, so I left it in here. This is showing us um, one total full cycle. So here we have the six carbon dioxides, but remember, they only go in one at a time. However, this shows you the general outputs of everything. Um, that we get throughout the whole experience. So we get six CO2s going in, um, making 12 P3 PGA, 12 ATP become 12 ADP, 12 NADPH become 12 NADP+, and that reduction of those molecules gives us the 12 G3P molecules two of which um, are used for the synthesis of organic molecules, and the others go on to regenerate RUVP, um, which also requires 6 ATP, this should be ATP, and that produces 6 ADP, and then the cycle is able to start over. So um, this is just another illustration if you want to pause here, um, yet another way to look at the Calvin cycle. So the last thing that we need to talk about in this section is some adaptations certain plants have made in order um, to conserve water. So if we take a look at the structure of a leaf, um, typically the stomata is where we see um, a lot of water as well as a lot of carbon dioxide in the leaf of a plant. Um, this stomata, you can kind of see here, is able to open and close um, depending on where the plant is, what time of day it is, and um, whatnot. So um, the carbon dioxide and oxygen move in and out of plants via the stomata, and they can, like I said, they can open and close. 
Um, and typically, plants only close the stomata when water temperatures are too high. And the reason for this is because water vapor can also exit through the stomata or enter. And so when temperatures are high, they're trying to conserve water. So they don't want to have their stomata open all day. But this causes somewhat of a problem because it's more difficult for carbon dioxide to enter. So um, normal plants are typically referred to as C3 plants, and that's because um, in C3 plants, the fixation of carbon occurs via rubisco, and the first fixed organic compound, remember, in the Calvin cycle, is a three carbon molecule, hence the C3. Um, these plants are our typical plants, and um, we're not super concerned with them when it comes to adaptations, but they can um, go through something known as photorespiration, in which the stomata can close on hot days. Um, this does lead to there being less carbon dioxide, however, um, because remember, when the stomata are closed, the carbon dioxide can't get in, and the oxygen builds up. Um, and so what ends up happening is Rubisco can actually use oxygen to some extent in the Calvin cycle. And um, it makes less sugar, but this process is known as photorespiration because it occurs in the light, hence the photo. Um, it consumes oxygen and produces CO2. So the second half is kind of more similar to cellular respiration in terms of what's being taken in and produced. Um, and scientists think that the this photorespiration process evolved um, back in the past when the atmosphere had a lot more carbon dioxide um, and these plants were trying to protect themselves um, from the damaging products built up in the light cycle so they could use those and continue carrying on the Calvin cycle to some extent. So most of the time C3 plants are undergoing normal photosynthesis but other than that um, there is also photorespiration. C4 plants are plants that um, are have a modified pathway for sugar synthesis, and the first fixation of carbon is to a four carbon compound. So this is a little bit different than the Calvin cycle. Um, these are typically um, plants found in hot and dry environments where uh, um, where water is limited. Um, and so the stomata of C4 plants will partially close in order to conserve water. Um, the plant is still able to keep making sugars, um, and this happens in the mesophyll. It starts in the mesophyll, and then they move to um, the bundle sheath cells. Um, but they are moved by a different enzyme. So the fixation of carbon is um, run by a different enzyme, not Rubisco. Um, and that fixes the carbon dioxide into sugars um, in the mesophyll. And then um, this can occur even when carbon dioxide in the leaf is low. And then um, the four carbon compound that CO2 gets fixed into moves from the mesophyll to the bundle sheath cells where carbon dioxide is released. Um, and this allows the concentration of carbon dioxide to stay high enough um, for the Calvin cycle and avoid going into photorespiration like the C3 plate. Um, this process evolved independently many different times, um, keeping um, their uh, plants alive. Even though there's less sugar made, um, they don't need as much water, so that's really helpful. And some examples um, are Kentucky bluegrass, um, or sorry, not Kentucky bluegrass, crabgrass. Kentucky bluegrass is C3. Um, crabgrass grows better in the summer when there's less water, um, because it's able to undergo that C4. Finally, um, we have cam plants, and these are um, include examples like cacti, pineapples, and other succulents, and they only open their stomata at night, because if you recall, they want to conserve water during the day. However, this prevents CO2 from entering the plant during the day, and so CO2 can only enter at night. Um, during the day, this CO2 is stored as an organic acid. Um, and so the mesophyll stores this organic acid during the day or during the night. And um, until daytime, when the light comes out, the light reactions then can supply the ATP and NADPH, once again, that are needed. Um, the carbon dioxide gets released from the organic acid made the night before, and sugar is created, just like the regular Calvin cycle. Um, so desert plants 
can survive the dry conditions, but they're pretty slow growing because they can only really undergo their photosynthetic processes um, at night uh, or start gathering materials for the photosynthesis at night. And then during the day, they actually undergo photosynthesis. So um, C3 plants, pretty simple. They make glucose by taking in carbon dioxide and um, converting that.